Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to see some friendly faces here. And, uh, and I was thinking on my way out here and everything, just um, how much has happened over the years since I've been coming out here and how many of you have been through so many different things um, as we've all kind of traveled the church world together. <laughs> And, you know, God is faithful. It doesn't matter what it is that happens. If we will just trust him, he will carry us through. And um, one of the things that I felt like he has been impressing on me quite a bit is that he's prepared us for what we're going through right now. You know, in um, 2 Chronicles 29, 35, and 36, it says... The service of the house was set in order. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced that God had prepared the people since the events took place so suddenly. And, you know, we've been talking for years and years and years about the suddenlies of God are going to take place. And we've just kind of laid back and said, well, I've been waiting for suddenlies for a long time. <laughs> but I really believe that we're in the time period now where many of those suddenlies have already begun to take place. Some things that have taken us by surprise in the world, the political arena for sure, and as well as in the body of Christ. And I just want to say to you, it doesn't again, it doesn't matter what it is that you've been through or are going through, God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he's going to help you through to the other side. One of the things that I have noticed, and you know, I'm, I'm sure you have too, is that we've been in a time of great emotional turbulence. And it just doesn't matter what topic you want to talk about. Um, there just seems to be a lot of emotional turbulence in the air. And of course, the Word of God says that you know, for us to uh, renew our minds daily, and that's with the Word of God. But, you know, we don't have to even just be religious about it by saying something like that. We need to recognize that in a very real way for each other and understand that each of us is under some pretty spectacular pressure from the emotional turbulence we're going through on our own as well as out there in the world. And some people, you know, can't even handle the uh, emotional turbulence in their own home, let alone some of what's going on uh, in the earth. So that's why we see that there are some who can't handle it to the point that, you know, if they don't have Jesus, they don't know to, let's, let me pull aside, let me think about this, let me pray about this or whatever, but instead they just go nutsy cuckoo, I call it, and either shoot people up or bomb places or do other kind of crazy and volatile things. But that word volatile, that's the whole point. If we don't have Jesus in these emotionally turbulent times, that's exactly what's going to happen is we're going to become volatile, which means possibly even explosive. I've um, um, been suffering with uh, a diverticulitis attack, which is the worst I've ever had. I had one a couple years ago when I was here, too. And I've been pretty sick the past couple weeks, but I've still been pressing on. But consequences are I also can't handle air conditioning. And so excuse me if I clear my throat now and then as well. Anyhow, one of the uh, words that the Lord spoke to me one time, well, first of all, Y'all know that Bob Jones he used to be like my spiritual papa when he was alive. And I went to meetings at his home every week for five years. And one of the things that he told us is, I'll tell you everything I know as long as you promise that you'll give it to others and don't just hold it to yourself. Well, one of the things that he taught us is to pay attention when you first wake up to, to what you hear or see. And that, that doesn't even necessarily mean in the natural, by the way. It, he means, meant like if you uh, are sound asleep and you just wake up and you, you haven't even opened your eyes, sometimes you'll even have a flash vision of something or uh, a quick racing thought. 
and he's always told us, don't be quick to open your eyes, don't be quick to go look at something else, because it's in those few small still moments that you hear from God the most clear. So the other day when I first woke up, I heard the word relentless, and I saw it in, in, in the air. I just saw the word relentless. And I was like, oh, great, what does that mean, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, the enemy's pursuit has been relentless, but don't worry, because I'm more relentless than anyone. And, you know, the word relentless, I, I like to look up the words as well as the word. It means showing or promising no abatement of severity, intensity, strength or pace, unrelenting, relentless pressure, a relentless campaign. And, um, you know, sometimes when we're going through that type of relentless pressure um, because of life, because of even spiritual things, it can be almost overwhelming. And, and again, we've got to pay attention not only to what we're going through, but the fact that others are going through that as well. And so I was pretty upset even to see young people out there, you know, doing stupid things, upturning cars and um, throwing temper tantrums about different political things and all that. And the Lord said, watch because that's the fish gate. And he says, and they are yet to come into the kingdom. That's the harvest that hasn't yet occurred. And he said, so don't make fun of my fish at the fish gate who haven't yet come in. He says, but it's time to go get them. It's time to go to the fish gate and begin to, to start fishing. And the word of God does tell us in several places as well that we need to pray for the laborers because the, the, the harvest is there, but the laborers are few. And so we need those who will go in there. That's not everybody's job. That's not you know, necessarily mine. I'm getting up there, I'm you know, in my mid-60s now, and I can't handle too much heat or too much cold or sometimes even standing very long. But uh, we can pray for the harvest. We can pray for the leaders of the harvest and those who have a heart uh, to bring the kingdom in. And I'll tell you what, we have a, a bunch of youth right now that are really, they have that relentless pursuit <laughs> within them that we can train to do the harvest. And, and as we do, as we train them, we'll see that great ingathering begin to occur that God has promised for many years. But some of this that we're waiting for might not happen in such a friendly way. You know, I know that they've been saying for years that the stadiums are gonna be full and all that. But what I've seen is every time there's been stadiums full, it's been because of some natural disaster, just like what happened with Hurricane Katrina. And, and so while everybody's thinking it's going to be, oh, yeah, we're just going to get this phone call. Jesus is here, and let's all go to the stadium. <laughs> it's not quite going to turn out that way. Um, that there are going to be people who are finally realizing their need for a Savior because of the, the things that are going on that aren't so good in the earth. And as I studied even um, regarding the past um, moves of God and everything, one of the things is that people finally came to their knowledge that, hey, we, we need Jesus. We can't keep on going on with our lives the way that it is. We need a savior. And that that knowledge that came from inside, um, which you know the Holy Spirit had to give because you know, nobody comes to, to the Father except the Holy Spirit woo them. But that, that is what was the motivating factor and what caused people to begin to cry out for a savior. And, and so, again, we even need to pray that, you know, Holy Spirit, we just ask you to call, to begin to call and to woo in this nation, to begin to show them that they need a savior and not for any tragedy to happen, 
but just for that knowledge of, hey, you know something? Um, my life uh, pretty much sucks, and I can't keep going on the way that it is. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of us agree we've all been at that point at one time or another. And as God is faithful to us, you know, he will be faithful to others as well. And let's not be harsh one to another when we see somebody going through something or when we sense that um, there's a change even in regard to their personality or the way that they're treating us. Because you never know what's going on at home. You never know what type of thing they're experiencing, whether it could be a job-related thing, it could be at home, relationally related thing with their family, whatever that might be. And if we're not quick to judge another, they won't be quick to judge us as well. And, you know, Satan's defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And sometimes that's why God tells us that, you know, our testimony is important. Because when we've been through something, we're able to help to minister to and encourage other people who might be going through that same thing. So don't hold back from, from giving that testimony either. So the other day, it was um, really kind of funny because again, uh, it was one of those times when it was the first things that I heard in the morning and everything. And I was just about ready to go to do a church service. And all of a sudden, I heard a saying from an old, um, movie from, I don't know, it must have been the 80s or whatever, uh, from the movie called The Godfather. <laughs> and I just heard this, to the mattresses. <laughs> well, that whole thing had to do with it's time to fight. It, it's time to fight. And I looked it up uh, just to be sure of what I was talking about. And what it was was that um, the man said, you know, no more meetings, no more discussions, no more tricks. I just have one mes message, and, and that is, it's an all-out war. Today, we go to the mattresses. And I, I really feel like that's, some of us need to get that mindset and to quit letting the enemy have territory. To just say, okay, that's it, that's enough. Now, I'm, I'm not going to play around with this anymore. No more games, you know. The enemy's just been using such ruthless tactics. Um, no more Mr. Nice Guy here. Um, but it's, it's time to go to the mattresses. It's time to get serious. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. And that doesn't mean bombs and <laughs> shooting and things like that. It means for us to be violent in the areas of, of even or worship and intercession and so forth and not allow the enemy to have any more space. And one of the things that the Lord has spoken to me before and I've shared with y'all is worship is our warship. So that even when we worship, um, it's like being on God's warship. And while we're worshiping, He's taking our little ship through the, the um, waves and the, the, the tossing and the turning of the stormy seas and, and putting us on dry ground, on safe ground. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all we have to do. But other times there's a real confrontation that needs to happen and where we're not just going to be, oh, worship, 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 blah, blah, blah. You know, sometimes it's, no, in Jesus' name, and enemy, I tell you, this is it. This is the end. Um, I've had enough of your stuff, you know, and, and when I say that I've had it, I mean I've had it, and that's an, an one day too much, <laughs> and, and you can't have your way like this anymore. God says that you're defeated, and, and I just proclaim you're a defeated foe, and, you know, just keep after and using the word of God like that. And, you know, because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, as it says in Ephesians 6, but against a prince and principality of the air. And 
one of the best tools that we can use is the Word of God as, as we battle, uh, as we do life for that matter. And it's His Word that doesn't go forth and return void. And so, you know, if, if you're in a battle, the best thing to use is the Word of God because, again, His Word does not go forth and return void. You know, there's a lot of things that sometimes we Christians are just too nice <laughs> about and let pass by. And that's even Ronald Reagan talked about it in the form of that, you know, we were the, how do you put it, uh, unlistened to or unheard from um, enemy. And, but we need to be the, the one that is known. And, and I feel like that in the midst of all this emotional turbulence that we've been through, we've forgotten somehow how to battle. And I love that song, this, this is how I fight my battles. Have you heard that one? <laughs> and we were doing that the other day at one church and then all of a sudden somebody says, no, this is, this is how we win our battles. So we started singing, this is how we win our battles, you know. <laughs> and not just fight, but we fight to win. Yes. It's how we win them. And for that, we've also got to stick together. We've got to be in unity with each other in the realms of the faith. And that doesn't mean that we're all the same kind of person or you know, like zombies. <laughs> that type of thing, but it means to be in agreement um, that, hey, that's the enemy, and yeah, we're gonna beat him. <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter what your problem is or what my problem is, doesn't matter what we don't like about each other, but we're on the same team, and we're gonna fight for and with each other against the enemy. And you're not my enemy, the enemy's my enemy, and the enemy, is your enemy too. And don't forget that. The Bible says where there is unity, the commanded blessing of God is. He commands his blessing when there is unity, when we can come into that boldness of agreement. And, you know, one of the, um, the things that the Lord told me is a while back, um, that, hold on just a second, let me grab a swallow of water. He reminded me of that old song where it says, does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? <laughs> you know? And uh, in Matthew 5, 20, it, it speaks to us and it says, you know, not to be concerned even when we see the, the battles all around us because where the sin abounds, grace abounds even more. And so we need to be looking at the situation in the reverse way of what the enemy would want us to. Instead of in fear, but look at those situations that are going on that the enemy is doing and saying, well, you know what? Because I see this, because I see the enemy doing this, I know this is where I'm called to win. And, you know, a, a lot of in, uh, church groups, excuse me, ministries have been calling for a reformation. Well, what does a reformation mean? You know, as I looked through the word um, and through church history as well, whenever there was something called a reformation, what it was, was an act of being reformed and changed for the better. I don't know about you, but I could take reformation every day. <laughs> I could always be reformed and changed <laughs> better uh, today than I was yesterday. And then another famous buzzword that's been going around is awakening. Um, we need an awakening. Well, awakening is uh, aroused from sleep, aroused from inactivity or indifference a revival of interest in something such as religion, coming into an awareness like a discovery of, of new understandings. And, you know, in Ephesians 5, uh, one of the verses there says, Awake, awake, O thou that sleepest, 
And there's times that, you know, I've just spoken that over myself, over the area I live in, put my hand on the map, speak it over the United States, over the world. Awake, awake, world. Awake, awake, O thou that sleepest, and come to the knowledge of the truth of the Son of God. And we truly do need to come to that knowledge, that understanding that we need a savior, that we need reformation, we need to be changed for the better. Because let's face it, it's, it's kind of like if the first step in any even counseling session is when somebody will finally say, yep, I need help. I've, I finally realize that I need help. And sometimes that's a big hurdle to overcome with somebody because they have to humble themselves and admit, uh, I might have been wrong somewhere along the, the way. And that's the hardest thing, you know, for some people to, to admit. It's why they won't, don't want to go to counseling, because they don't want to be told that they were the one that was in the wrong. They want their spouse to be wrong. They want their kids to be wrong. They want anybody to be wrong but them. <laughs> um, but we've got to realize where we're wrong. We've got to realize where we have need of change. And so I feel like the Lord is just saying to us in this time period um, to, you know, gently and lovingly, even to ourselves, because it's not like God wants to see us turn on ourselves or anything like that, but e gently and lovingly, even to ourselves, just like David did, l say, Lord, try me and see if there be any wicked way within me. And as we do, he'll show us and he'll do it um, with all the grace and, and mercy and love that he possibly can, because that's how God is. And you know what? There's no sin, not one, that is stronger than the blood of Jesus Christ. So don't think there's anything you've done or could think up that would be more difficult than the blood of Jesus. I'm sorry, but I'm not doing real well. Uh, if I could have a chair. So, don't anybody panic or anything. I just don't want to pass out in front of anybody. <laughs> um, this is how I fight my battles. <laughs> um, so, Lord, I just thank you for each and every one here this morning. And, Lord, I know that each and every one of us are fighting certain battles. And... Lord, I come to you and I ask you that you would just show us, Lord, how good you are, that you would help to bring restoration to lives today that need a touch from you in fighting their battles. And we just ask you, Father God, that um, you would just carry us through and, and bring us to victory, that even in those situations that might seem impossible, with you, nothing is impossible. With you, everything is him possible, God possible. And so we just thank you for that. And Lord, if uh, anyone needs personal encouragement, we just uh, avail ourselves for that today and ask you that you would just speak especially to anyone that would need that today, in Jesus' name. Jesus name so um, I just I just felt like there was like this wind and it wasn't the air conditioning <laughs> but I just felt like a wind uh, blow through the room the Holy Spirit wind and just sense that you know the Lord is moving in the room um, and among different ones and letting you know it's like a, a, a kiss from the Holy Spirit and letting you know that he cares for you and receive that if you feel that um, and know that you know he wants to give to you uh, the peace of mind the joy in your heart again he wants to help you uh, to be able to come through and and to experience his victory for your lives amen so I was hearing the words to an old song, um, and it, it talks about, it's called His Eyes on the Sparrow, and it talks about, you know, why should my 
Why should I be discouraged? Why should the shadows fall? You know, and it talks about how that, you know, where there's darkness, when Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And I just kept, was feeling that as a song over you all, like that the Lord was saying, his, if his eye is on the sparrow, he's going to watch out for a little tiny sparrow out there. Don't you know that he's going to watch out for you as well? And so, um, you know, this lady right here, what's your first name? Yes. Pam. Okay, and who's with you? Okay. And I just was, uh, as I was uh, speaking those words, I felt like the Lord said uh, that in particular that's for you right now, that, um, you know, his eye is on you and your family, and that he's carrying you through the situations that um, you're having to walk through at the moment, and that you're not alone. Um, that his, even his holy unfallen angels are sent to guard and protect you and your family and that he wants you to know that this is a season um, that you're going to look back on with remembrance of how he carried you um, and that I just see his loving hand just kind of wrapped around all of you and just that he's saying uh, he's there, and you're going to make it through. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yep. So there's a gentleman back in the back over here, and you just turned around to see who I'm talking about. Yeah, what's your first name? David, David. and your wife is? Ramona. Pardon me? Ramona. David and Ramona. And Lord, I just thank you for David and Ramona, and I just ask you, Father, that you would just um, pour your spirit out in their direction. Thank you, Lord. I heard changes, 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 and the changes aren't over yet. And that it's, I just kept seeing seasons um, of change, and one would think, okay, well, that's it for a while, but no, it's like, here comes another one. Um, and and it, was, it was good changes. It, it was almost like a roller coaster, but not, because there wasn't any like, boom, then you're gonna plunge or anything like that. Uh, but it was like God was taking you to new levels of a mountain. And, and the Lord said, and the best is yet to come. And that he's taking you into a higher level of viewing, um, even for um, the season that you're in. And that that, that uh, place, that it's like that platform that he has for you of viewing. Um, and even hearing the word platform it's going to be a platform for you for the ministry that he's called you to all these years. And so just know that his hand is upon you both um, in order to see your safe arrival in that place and time. And that he hasn't forgotten all of his promises and that all of his promises are yes and amen and that uh, all of what he's put on the inside of you is still going to be used in the days ahead. And so, uh, again, just know that, um, like, safe arrival is planned. <laughs> safe arrival is going to happen. And then, like, this flourishing time period um, as you reach that plateau, that platform that he has for you. But I just keep getting that word, platform. He has a platform for you. Um, for what he's called you to. And I see you being um, established um, yeah, like uh, almost like a permanent establishment um, in the call of God on your lives. And it's kind of like, well, finally. 
Um, but God says, truly, uh, it's going to be that the latter half of your life shall be greater than the first. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So there's uh, this gentleman right here with your arm around the lady. Yeah, and uh, what are your names? Billy and Margaret and Parker. Okay. Barbara. Billy and Barbara? Okay, sorry. Thank you, Lord. You know, I was just, um, the Lord said, you're right where you belong. That uh, it's like you have been from place to place and haven't felt in place at all. And, and the Lord said, you can't go by feelings this time. Um, that you're where you belong. And it's just like a piece, you're, you're the piece of puzzle that's needed for where God's put you. And that the enemy has often lied to you and just uh, when once you're in place, just snatched you right back out. And God said, it's time to be a part of all that God has for you and not to let the enemy try to pull you back out again. That God says, you are accepted in the beloved and that you are beloved as well. And then he, he even took that word apart and he said, so be loved. <laughs> let yourself be loved on and receive that, um, that you've been hurt, uh, even in some church situations before. Um, and, but God says, that doesn't mean every place is like that. And I saw his arms around your shoulders, and he said, just be calm, be still, and know that I am God. And, and he was just there as calm, cool, and collected as could be, and he says, I've got your backs. And, and I heard plug in. It's time to plug in and trust God and, and trust some of those that are among you. And, um, and Billy, I just feel like that the Lord said, uh, you need to plug in with the men's uh, group here, that uh, there's much for you and, and also that there's much in you that's for others. And, and the Lord says for your whole family. And as you do that, the best is yet to come. Amen. You know, there, uh, the word says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And I just feel like that's what the Lord said. Don't worry, there's always going to be uh, good and bad every place you go because people are human. Um, but delight yourself in the Lord. And that's when you'll see his promises come to pass for you. Thank you, Lord. So just kind of pray in the spirit under, under your breath for a couple of minutes while we keep checking in here with the Lord and we'll see what the spirit has for anybody else. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, I just want to say what we're looking for, this new revival that's about to happen or whatever you want to call it, it's not going to be as clean as everybody thinks it's going to be, not going to be as, uh, you know, scheduled as anybody thinks it's going to be. I remember when I was a young kid and revival hit our church and I was so excited. I couldn't wait to get some of my friends to come and 
Um, we couldn't wait to get uh, this one set of relatives to come to church with us. And don't you know, that was the Sunday that Sister Wackadoodle had to wackadoodle herself down the aisle in the worst wackadoodle way that you could possibly imagine. And I'm like, oh God, why did she have to do that today? But you know, I mean, she'd been really pretty good for a couple weeks, so I thought we were safe <laughs> to bring our friends in. But oh no, there she goes, whirling and twirling and um, crowing like a chicken and <laughs> everything else. And so I'm telling you, just expect there's going to be a few weirdos now and then <laughs> that, that uh, act out. But you know what? We just all need to learn how to accept each other, too. <laughs> and and in, in some of the weird ways that different people are. And to understand, well, you know what? Uh, there's a place for them in the kingdom, too, as well. And uh, But it just cracks me up when I hear people talk about it. They're like... So how do you think that this revival is going to look? And they've just got this perfect answer, you know. And I'm like, well, wow, are you in for a surprise? <laughs> and don't forget to bring your closest relative either. <laughs> so... Um, the lady in the back, straight back there, the back chair with the, yep, that's the backest chair I can see. <laughs> What's your first name? Cindy. Cindy, okay. So Lord, I thank you for Cindy, and I speak blessing over her. God says, he has not forgotten, in, and it's a, it's a verse in Hebrew, he has not forgotten how you have and do minister to the saints. And, um, and I just see you as being someone that you enjoy doing for others. And, and God said he hasn't forgotten that. And he, he didn't miss seeing that either. And that there's a blessing on you for that, for all the times that you did it. And it's not like you did it and then expected anything in return. And that his hand is on you. And God says you're kind of like a secret weapon at times and that uh, the different things that you have done in secret, you know, the Lord says he rewards you for it openly, and that uh, even now he sees the desires of your heart, and, you know, a lot of people, the desire of their heart is mainly for themselves, but um, when God looked at yours, it was mainly of, oh, I, I would do this for this person, I would do this for that person. And, and the Lord uh, loves that about you. And he said, and so watch and see, because he gives seed to the sower, and the best is yet to come. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I almost forgot about this. Um, some of you are going to laugh at me for this, but I can't help it. It's, that's how I saw this. Um, when I was a kid, there was this television program on, and it was about this little train junction out in the country. And there was these, this family with, uh, I think it was three females, and they called it Petticoat Junction. You all remember that? Well, for some reason, when I went to pull down the roads, <laughs> that's exactly what I heard and saw was this, that song from Petticoat Junction. And I was like, what on earth is that about? And I feel like the Lord said that, that this is going to be known um, almost like a Petticoat Junction stop because of the women that God is raising up here. That there are women here that are dear to God's heart and, and who care about helping others, and that there's going to be a blessing on this place because of the women, that the women God is raising up here are, are true spiritual mothers, and that you women have carried a, a real load uh, in the realms of the spirit for a long time, and God wants you to know 
that not only has he seen and heard your cries, but he's responding to it. Thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes we've gone through so much in our life that we learn to kind of put up a wall um, when we have things in our own life um, because we've seen so much with everybody else. It's like, well, nobody needs to hear my problems or anything like that. Um, but God said it's time for the body of Christ to be vulnerable one with another because as we are, others will f feel comfortable being vulnerable with us as well. We don't get vulnerable with everybody because, um, you know, there's a danger in that, um, but only those that the Lord would allow us to. But in our own family, we've got to be vulnerable with our family. And church family is very important. And, and I just want to encourage you all that even though you've been through a lot, you've been through a lot together. And, and that it's, I don't know, I'm just hearing, it's safe here. It's safe here now. It's safe here. Kind of like that um, uh, saying from like when we would all play tag and everything when we were kids, ollie, ollie, oxen free, <laughs> ollie, ollie, oxen free. And that the Lord is saying, it's time, it's time to, to be free. It's time to quit hiding out. It's time to quit trying to find a, a, a spot to hide where nobody else knows you or knows what's going on in your life. But the Lord is saying, Ali, Ali, oxen free. So Nancy, I, <clears throat> I had this vision of, of you and your husband all of a sudden, and you were standing on your porch um, at home, and you were looking out, and then all of a sudden I got a little bit further back view, and it was like it was a sailing ship. And um, I felt like the Lord said, uh, it's going to be smooth sailing, um, and that I don't know what's gone on that hasn't been so smooth sailing, but he said, be at peace because it's going to be smooth sailing now. And he's going to take care of all of those things um, that you have put in your heart. And, and I saw like this flag almost like, uh, I surrender, you know, kind of a thing. And, and God said, just surrender to me, but don't. <laughs> don't surrender to the enemy because everything's going to be just fine. And that his hand is on you too and, um, and just his blessing and his approval for the continued faithfulness um, through the years and through the, the rough times. But he said for you all personally, um, it's going to be smooth sailing. Amen. I just felt like the Lord said um, for this church, you know, it's, it's been a long time. You all have waited through um, a lot. Um, and God said, and it's like safety zone now, um, that you've gone the long haul. And, you know, I really believe, like when the Lord was saying about that Ali Ali oxen free, that there's really something important in that for you all as a church in this season. And I would just encourage you, um, start acting like family. Um, and, and pay close attention to one another as family 
you know, be family. Um, bring your food to church and share it afterwards type of thing. Uh, that it's very, very important um, right now to now establish more of a family um, relationship with each other. Because for a while it's been, well, okay, now let's establish some boundaries here because we've got to, because look what all we've been through, that type of thing. But the Lord said, now it's time to be family. And that truly the best is yet to come. Amen. Well, Pastor, I think that's about it.